with the grace of Allah, we are starting today's Surah Maida. We pray to Allah that with the with the wasila of Al Bayt, uh, Allah make it complete this this Surah for us. Maida came. The name of Maida came because of uh, uh, Prophet Isa asking Allah to send a tray of food from the heaven. So that tray of food was called the Maida. So the Surah name is Maida because that description is in this Surah. Maida is the last detailed Surah revealed to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maida has the uh, has 16 times Yahyul Ladina Amanu. So it is a very significant Surah. The verse I recited: "Oh, you have faith, fulfill the contracts." The four-footed animals are lawful to you, except those which will be recited unto you. Pilgrim God, while and while you are in, deem not game permitted to be hunted. Verily, Allah decrees whatever He intends. Aufobil Oqud means you have to fulfill your commandments. The uh, about this Prophet said, there is no religion for the person who does not fulfill his promise. Covenant is the religion. Uh, so all these things, even uh, any kind of written contract or verbal contract, written promise, verbal promise is all you have to fulfill out. Uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Allah alayhi Al-Quran is the covenant of Allah into his people. This is a covenant. So we have to fulfill our covenants. And then Allah talks about that the four feet animals are, are halal for you. They are lawful for you. Except what is recited to you. Now what is recited to you is, we'll read in next verse. Those four-feeted uh, feeted animals are eight pairs of four-feeted animals, which has been described in other part of Quran Hakim about that. But Allah says that when you are wearing, when you are an Aram, you cannot hunt them. It, it's, it's not permitted. Inna Allah yahkum ma yurid, Allah, whatever He wills, He, he makes His decrees. یاہلدینہ <laughs> وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ Please say one salawat. Allahumma salawat wa alayhumma. Allah says further, O you have faith, do not profane, means disrespect, Allah's monuments, means Allah's signs, nor the sacred month, nor the offering, nor the sacrifice animal with garlands, nor those going to the sacred house seeking the grace and the pleasure of their Lord. And when you are free from pilgrim guard, then you hunt. And let not the hatred of people hindered you from the sacred house move you to commit aggression and cooperate in righteousness and piety and do not cooperate in sin and transgression and be in fear of Allah where the Allah is severe in penalty. So now Allah is talking about that uh, they don't do not disrespect Allah's signs. What are Allah's signs? Uh, Shairillah. Shairillah are Safa, Marwa, Maqam Ibrahim, Mina, uh, all of these are Shairillah. Where is Shahr al Aram? And what is the uh, second month? Zilhaj. Here is Zilhaj. Do not disrespect them. Neither you disrespect the sacrifice animal which you take to Mina and not the garlands. What are the garlands? Because people, when they carry the, the sacrifice animal, they used to put belts around their neck to, to show other people that this is. The respected animal, it is good. It has to go to Mina. Do not steal it. Do not take it away. So Allah says, respect their garland which are hanging from the neck. Neither disrespect the people who are going to Betullah, seeking Allah's grace and pleasure. You have to respect them. Allah says, respect all of them. And Allah says that the, uh, the, the hatred of the people should not, uh, uh, and the hatred of the people should not make you. Who uh, the, uh, make you hinder them going to sacred house and you do aggression towards them. Now let me explain this part. Before the victory of Makkah, polity used to torture believers and they used to stop them going to 
Allah's house. So there was anger toward, in the heart of believers about them. So when the victory of Makkah came, then there was a feeling that now we will take some revenge. Allah says, do not take revenge. Everybody is except Islam. So do not take revenge and don't try to to do translation against those who accepted Islam and those who were the politicians before and they, they, they tortured you, do not torture them back, please. Be, be kind to them, Allah says. And cooperate in righteousness and piety, Allah says. And do not cooperate in sin and transgression. And be in fear of Allah, verily Allah is severe in penalty, Allah says. But taqullah in Allah shadidul yaqab. Now, what is ism? Somebody asked Prophet. Prophet what is what is sinning? Prophet said, when you do something and your heart gets disturbed and get nervous, that's sinning. And Prophet said, that, who is the believer? Allah said, Prophet said, the believer is the one when he does a good deed, his heart is happy, and when he sin, his heart is nervous heart. This is the belief. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ Fear Allah and Allah severe in penalty. This is Raidman Salwar. Allahumma salli ala khanu wa ala muhammad. It is a long verse. And inshallah we will do in small parts. Now Allah is saying what is forbidden for them. Forbidden to you is our carrion, means dead animal. Blood, the flesh of swine. What has been slaughtered in the name of any other than that of Allah. And the beast strangled, beaten to death, killed by fall, the goat to death by horn, and that which a wild beast has begun to eat, except what you slaughter. And what has been slaughtered before idols are that you divide by arrows, all that is ungodliness. Today those who disbelieve have despaired of your religion, so do not dread them but dread me. Today I have perfected your religion to, for you and completed my favors on you and I have chosen for you Islam as a religion. But whoever is helpless, forced by hunger, without inclining to sin, then verily Allah is forgiving, merciful. It's a long verse. So there are 11 things which Allah has forbidden. The dead animal, the blood, the flesh of swine, animal slaughtered without the name of Allah, and the beast strangled to death, or beast beaten to death, because in the old time, even the fire worshiper used to do that, that they will either strangle the animal to kill to eat, or they will beat to death, or what is next is, throw from the height to kill them, falling down, or sometimes animal die with the horn of another animal, those situations, and also wild beasts eat them, but you go and do uh, slaughter them before death, that's okay. And what is also not acceptable is animal, animal slaughtered before idol stones. What is Nusubi? Nusubi. What is Nusubi? Those were the stones, they were protruding stones and these two uh, non-believers at the time of Prophet time uh, uh, in, in front of Kaaba there were stones, they used to cut the animal, slaughter and they put the blood to the idols. That's not accepted. And that you divide by arrows. What is divide by arrows? At that time they used to take a bag and they used to keep ten arrows in the bag and they, it was a lot, lot of system. On the seven arrows, it was put how many share everybody will get, and three arrows were without any share. So, if, if the ten people come there, they'll slaughter an animal, and like camel, and then they say, pick the arrow. So, like a lotto system, somebody had one share, somebody had two share. So, they'll get the share as much. Arrow is saying the shaft of the arrow, arrow, right? And three arrows were without any share. So, th the one who had share will get share, when who had no share has to pay for them. So the Lord of Sallam Allah said it is unlawful, it's a transgression. Valikum fisk. Now, this verse was stop, uh, means this was stop and then a 
and then and last again this thing continues and it says like this but whoever is helpless forced by hunger without inclining to sin then Allah is forgiving merciful Allah says but Allah gives the condition here that one who is helpless because of hunger but he doesn't want to sin then Allah is uh, forgiving and merciful means if you are in emergency and if you cannot you eat only that kind of thing as much your body needs you don't eat more than that Allah says you cannot eat haram food if you're dying or you're in emergency sick only as much your body needs Allah says I am forgiving and merciful now now we talk about this this part of it please now let me read it what is the translation today those who disbelieve have despaired for, of your religion so do not dread them but dread me today I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor on you and I have chosen for you Islam as a religion now we stop here now there is a deep discussion about when this verse came somebody argued this verse could be on 8th of Hijri when Prophet 1 Makkah now question comes when Prophet 1 Makkah there was still Jahiliya going on in the Makkah after even after his victory the Mushrikin were doing Hajj and Islam was not spread all over the Hijaz either and even Polythese women were doing naked Hajj so how come they got helpless at that day no they didn't get helpless that day and the whole thing was not completed right now somebody says no on the ninth of Hijra when Surah Tawbah came because all the people of Makkah except Islam and everybody in Hijaz except Islam so now now we can say today those who disbelieve her despaired of your religion okay but it was the only people of Hijaz who accepted but what were the people uh, of Europe at that time how come they all got despaired that day and, and how come their religion got completed because it said today I have perfected your religion for you how it got perfected because even after the ninth of, of ninth year Quran was still being revealed and the laws were still being revealed to Prophet Sallallahu so how come we can say that it was the ninth of the year of Hijri that Islam was perfected because Islam, Quran was still being revealed laws were still being ordered so we can say that it will not be ninth of the Hijra then somebody says, okay, it's the 10th of the Hijra at the time of Arafat when Prophet was doing his last Hajj. Now, uh, because he showed uh, in practice the Hajj rituals, especially Hajj Tamatto. So you think that if Prophet showed Hajj Tamatto, then was it Hajj Tamatto that, that, the, that all this, uh, Allah was waiting for this thing to be shown that now religion is perfect and now because of that disbelievers have been despaired why disbelievers be despaired if Prophet Shura Hajj Tamatto and was the religion completed that day because it's, it, it is said that even after Hajj, uh, Arafat Quran was still being revealed to Prophet the verse of Kalala which is the last verse of Nisa was revealed after that after the after the 10th of Zilij of 10th Hijra Kalala verse was revealed after that and also the verse of interest came after that so Quran was still being revealed and laws were still being ordained so, so how come the religion was complete on Arafat day cannot be possible so then when the when the religion was completed and when the polytheists got, got despaired polytheists were waiting at the time of prophet that anybody who brings the mission mission survives as long as he lives when he dies he's done especially if he has no son prophet had no son and they were waiting for prophet to die so that his mission gets finished like big kings they have missions like Pharaoh came and 
he died with the mission and like Mughal kings came and they died with their mission. Okay, this, he will die too. And they were waiting for that. So when all Shia commentators, a lot of Sunni commentators believe that this was, was revealed on 18th of 18th of Zalhaj, when Prophet was at the Ghadira home, and Allah revealed this. This was when Prophet declared Man kantum mola fahaza aliyun mola that to whom I am master, Ali is the master and Prophet said, oh Allah, be his friend who is Ali's friend and be the enemy of them who is Ali's enemy to protect Islam. Because you have to be a successor to make religion survive. And then they, all the blessings were completed. Allah perfected the religion. Allah made it perfect the, the religion because then you, you, Allah gave a successor to protect Islam and to, to, to take it further the mission. And, and that's how they, they got despaired and Allah perfected. So perfection comes with Vilaya. And this was a real perfection uh, and Allah finished his favors. It was a favor. Today, and completed my favors. Allah completed the favors. Fala taqshaun waqshauni, don't fear them, fear me. Because before they used to fear non-believers, Allah don't fear them anymore because you are I have perfected my blessings, you have a vilayat with you now. Don't be fear, afraid. But fear me. How to fear me? Means fear my religion now. Fear the vilayat now. Now vilayat is seen as a favor of Allah, one of the biggest favor of Allah SWT. Allah says in the Quran that if you do not appreciate, think my favor, I, I change it to, to hunger and fear. There are verses about it. And that's what happened to Muslim. Muslim left vilayat of Imam, Imam Ali. And we see how Muslims are suffering because of this. Because this, this is Allah's rule. That if you be, are thankless to Allah's name, then Allah gives you a taste of fear and hunger. That's what is happening in the Muslim world. This is Sadan Salawat. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya madha uhilla lahum qul uhilla lakum tayyibatu wa ma allam tu minal Javarihi mukallibina tu allimun muna hunna mimma allamukumullah fakulu mimma ansakna alaykum baskuru smullaha ilahi vattakulla inna laha sariyun hisab. They ask you what has been made lawful for them, say good things have been made lawful for you, and such hunting creatures as you teach, training them as hounds, and teaching them of what Allah has taught you, then eat what they seize for you. And mention Allah's name over it. And be in fear of Allah. Verily Allah is swift in reckoning. Allah says they ask you what is uh, lawful. Allah says every good thing is lawful. So this is the rule of Islam that any good thing is lawful. Every tayyibat is lawful. It's like common sense intelligence. It's lawful. Now Allah is saying about the hunting animals. I read the verse, now I am going to explain it, the, the, what is the meaning of these verses. It goes like this, that any hunting animal, when it catches hunt for you, then it is allowed for you. But it has to be trained the way Allah has trained the animal. Like falcons and th those things, when they catch the prey, Then if the prey is alive, then you slaughter it in Allah's name and you can eat it. Except hunting dog, the way you train him, the way Allah trained him. If, if he catches the animal and ca if animal dies before you go, then it's allowed for you. Only dog, hunting dog, is this way. Others, they have to be alive before you reach there and to slaughter. Only except hunting dog, that if he die. If the animal dies before reach, because you have said Allah's name when you're uh, leaving the dog. That's the ziba when you are letting the dog go. Because according to Aima Taharin, it is the only dog when he catches the, the prey, it dog prays for the master, not for himself. That's only that animal this way. 
uh, others they pray cash for themselves, even the trained one. That's why you do do slaughter them before before they die, except the hunting dog. But if if there is a non-trained dog, the rule doesn't go with him. Only the trained dog. Allah says the way Allah taught you teach them. That's a part of it. Except there's one more condition that if the hunting dog catches the prey and he eats part of it, and then then that is not allowed for you because then he, then the dog didn't catch for you but catch caught for himself. So that's the only difference. That's the only condition when you are not allowed. Now Allah says also, but taqullah in the sariul hasab and fear Allah, Allah is swift in reckoning. Why Allah said that? Because there are many hunters, they hunt for the sake of game, not for the real need. Allah doesn't like to kill animals for your game and joy. Allah wants it for your need. Because this is not right for you to kill animals just for hunting. That's why in Allah has sariul, sariul hasab. Please say on salawat, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aliyoma, Ohilulakum, Tayebat, Vatamul Ladina Utul Kitaba, Hellulakum, Vatamakum, Hellulahum, Val Mohsenatu, Minel, Muminati, Val Mohsenatu, Minel Ladina Utul Kitaba, Min Kablikum, Ida Atetu Muhunna, Ujura Hunna, Mohsinina, Vere Musafahin, Vala Mutahezi, Akhdan, Mamai Yakfurbil Imana, Fakat Habit Amalu, Vohofil Akhrat Minel Hasiri. Allah says, today good things have been made lawful for you and the food of those who have been given the book is lawful for you and your food is lawful for them. And the chaste woman from the believers and the chaste woman from those who have been given the book before you. When you give them their dowries, taking them in marriage, not fornicating, nor not taking them for paramount, paramours in secret. And whoever denies the faith, his work indeed is vain and he will be of the losers in the hereafter. Allah says that, that every good thing has been made lawful for you. The, f- the food of the people of book is lawful for uh, you and your food is lawful for them. Now I'll stop here. Now there are a lot of narration from al Bayt. The Taam here, the Taam al Ladin Utul Kitab, the Taam is, is wheat and grains. But some narration say it's also uh, lentils. So to, to go more details, you got to uh, ask your marja about it. But the f- and your food is allowed for them too. Then Allah says that uh, your chess women are allowed for you as a believers, and the chess woman, chess woman of people of book are are also allowed for you in marriage. When you give them their dowries, and and your intention is to have a marriage, clean marriage, not to have fornication or not to have secret uh, affair. وَمَنْ يَقْفُرْ بِالْكُفْرَ وَمَنْ يَقْفُرْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ حَبِتُ عَمَلُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever denies the faith, his work indeed is vain and he will be of the losers in the hereafter. So Allah give a leeway. Allah give some benefits to believers in this verse about be, being with the people of a book that you can eat their food and you can marry their women who are the uh, chaste women. B- before they were uh, in Surah Baqarah and the 60 Surah, there were verses which Allah forbade marrying disbelieving women. But this Maida came afterward, so Maida was cancelled those verses because it came afterward. It was one of the last verses. Now, the discussion about that. Is it allowed to do nikah or the muta? Then you have to go to your marja and ask about the conditions about that. Our fifth Imam says about this issue where it is lawful to marry only the simple hearted women from them. Only simple hearted, not the treacherous one. But uh, our sixth Imam warned about it and said, and I don't like Muslim men to marry a Jewish or Christian woman lest his child becomes a Jew or Christian. So we have to be careful that if the marriage comes, your child should stay Muslim. 
And the, this verse is warning, you know. Whoever denies the faith, his work indeed is vain and he will be of the losers in a hereafter. So after giving all this freedom, Allah warned believers that don't lose your faith. How do you lose faith? You can lose faith that you know you marry a Christian and Jewish lady and you just follow her cultures and customs and you forget your religion. You are given you are given these permissions so that you spread Islam in their community, not to follow them. That's not acceptable. So there are some narrations from our sixth Imam about and who denies the faith. For my yakfur bil iman, he says this is it is not implementing what he had acknowledged. An example of that is one neglects the prayer without sickness and without involvement in some work. Means, means, means if you do that, this, this is like losing your faith. Imam also says, it refers to him who believes yet obeys polytheists. It's also for him. And our fifth Imam says about it, it it's esoteric, Quranic interpretation, interpretation is Whosoever denies the wilaya of Ali, and Ali is the faith. That's also my yakfur biliman. So basically, if you lose, you don't adhere to what you acknowledge about faith and lose the pillars of religion, you are like that. You cannot lose the pillars of religion. You marry them, you forget salat, you forget. Rosa, you forget Hajj, means you lost your faith. فَقَدْ حَبِتُ عَمَلُوا وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Please, Sarvan Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now I'm going to recite the last verse about Surah Maida. يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا إِذَا قُنْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاخْسِلُوا وُجُوهُكُمْ فَاخْسِلُوا سلو وجوهكم وعيديكم إلى المرافق وامسحوا برؤوسكم وارجلكم إلى القابين وإن كنتم جنوبا فاتحروا وإن كنتم مرضا أو على سفر أو جاء أحد منكم من الغاية أو لا مستم النساء فلم تجدوا ما أن فتيمموا صعيدا طيبا فامسحوا ب وجوهكم وأيديكم منه ما يريد الله ليجلى عليكم من حرج ولكن يريد ليتحركوا وليتم نعمته عليكم لعلكم تشكرون اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد. This is last verse and this verse describes wudu and tayammum. Oh, you have faith when you stand up for prayer, wash your faces and your hands up to the elbow and wipe a part of your head and your feet up to the ankles and if you are polluted are in junub then perform a a total ablution means purify yourself and if you are sick or on a journey and one of you comes from the uh, privy or you have touched the woman and you can find no water then betake yourself to clean soil and wipe a part of your face and your hands with some of it Allah does not intend to put on you any difficulties but he intends to purify you and to complete his favors upon you in order that you might be thankful so Allah is teaching about how to do wudu that you wash your face that basically you wash your face by extending your hand completely and start from the forehead and go down washing your face and washing your hand up to elbow washing from top to bottom, not from bottom to top and then wiping the part of your head and part of your feet up to ankle in kuntum junubam fattaharu and if you are in junub then you you clean yourself, what does it mean? junub means junub meaning something goes away means when you are in a in the Janabat. Fattaharu means you purify yourself. And how do you purify yourself? By doing ghusl. Taking a 
total evolution, which is the host. But Allah is now talking about the condition of tayammum. Allah says, but if you are sick, means when you are sick, then you cannot use water, like if you have pneumonia, doctor says, don't use cold water, or you don't have any facility, if you cannot use water. So, and if you are sick or in a journey, if you are on a journey, you cannot find water, right? And if you are on a journey, or one of you come from privy, if you went to toilet, and now you have to do wudu, right? Now Allah talking about that. Or if you touch the woman, means if you have been with women, then, and if you are with the woman, then you do then you are in Junub, so you need bath, we know that. And you cannot find no water. So there are condition about Ghusla Janabat, and there is condition about Wudu, and you will not find water. Allah is saying, then Allah is teaching how to do Tayammum. Then betake yourself to clean soil, and wipe a part of your face and your hands with some of it. So you put your hand on the pure dust and wipe part of your face. How do you wipe? You put from the top of your head below your eyebrows and then you wipe your right hand and on the back and then left hand on your back up to the wrist only. Only part of it. This is Allah's uh, facility for, for, for us if there is no any water available. So Allah says that. Allah does not intend to put you on any difficulty. This is the basic principle of religion that Allah doesn't want to put any difficulty on us. Like you see all the rules of faith, there are a lot of leniency if there is a difficulty in any kind of Islamic rituals, Allah put a lot of ease. So that's Allah says, Allah does not intend to put you on any difficulty but He intends to purify you because when you put dust you get purified. When you put water you get purified. It's your soul which gets purified and to complete his favors upon you in order that you might be thankful. These are Allah's favors that he purifies us so we can be thankful. I'll come back to the first verse. Ya ayyulladzina amnu awfu bil uqud. We remember Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Because Allah said, oh you believe, fulfill the contracts, your promises. Imam Hussain promised Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam that that he is going to sacrifice his life for the sake of Islam. We will not find anything like this. The way Imam Hussein fulfilled his promise and sacrificed his, his whole family because he promised Prophet Sallallahu he promised Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now we go back to another part of the verse. When we, Allah talks about the people who are going to the, to the, uh, to the Baitul uh, uh, Masjid al-Haram, you got to respect them. We know that, we read that verse. That the one who is going to Hajj, you got to respect these people. When Imam Hussain was going to Hajj, people did not respect him. People wanted to kill him. That was their faith. Imam Hussain wanted to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Hajj. He could not even perform Hajj. That's, that's how the people at, at that time, hypocrites were there. They wanted to kill him during the period of Hajj. That's how they were. Allah says, help each other for, for righteousness and piety and do not cooperate in sin and transgression. We see this example in Karbala. In Karbala we see how the, uh, the Sahaba of Imam Hussain